I know it's here somewhere. Finally, finally. Oh, it's time for the duck. You're listening to Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. Ah, oh, take it away, doctor. Well, it's that time again, and the doctor is in. It's time once again for Dr. Bill, the computer curmudgeon. And this week's program has been a lot of trouble already. And I just tipped my camera. <laughs> ah! This has been a frustrating netcast to get started because the battery in my camera died. I was charging and charging and charging and charging, and it still didn't have enough juice. So we had to hook up the the old direct charge thing. Brick, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, techpodcast.com. If it's tech, it's right here on Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon. Sometimes your tech gives you a hard time. Sometimes it just says, no. And you have to, you have to strangle it into submission. Yes. <laughs> I'm in a mood because things keep giving me a hard time. I don't like it when my tech gives me a hard time. I want it to obey me. Anyway, let's go into the blog, shall we? First of all, I need to say that we are proud members of the Tech Podcast Network, which I did, and that we are proud members. At least I think I did. <laughs> I'm so confused. We are also proud members of the International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Let's try that again from the top. The International Association of Internet Broadcasters. Whew. Wow. You know, I would just start the whole netcast over, but it's just not my way. I like doing it live, so to speak. Um... Let's go into the blog, shall we? The blog is, of course, drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, as it says there on the screen. Assuming that Fred put it on the screen, since he's probably also going to be annoying. Hey, I know I you didn't do anything wrong. I'm just in a mood. Anyway, Fred, of course, is my imaginary friend. Who tries to keep me straight. <laughs> yes, I know. It is difficult sometimes. Okay. Enough of that. The blog is drbill.tv, D-R-B-I-L-L.tv, which is where we can find this week's blogifications that I have done. <laughs> the first one is that Android is going to be NSA proof. And I'm sure the NSA is not too thrilled about that, but the rest of us are. Those of us that care about our privacy, privacy for those of you in Rio, Linda, um, we are excited that Google has refined Android in the next version to be more, more private, shall we say. Okay, now there are a few caveats to that. First of all, it will be in the release that will be coming up, not the current release. It will also be... Um, just what you have on your phone or tablet or specific device running the new version of Android. If you store stuff up in the cloud, the NSA can still get to the cloud. If they fly with small, funny-looking airplanes. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> it just came to mind. Anyway, no, they can get to it up there, but on the actual individual device, you're good once we get to this new version. Okay, next item is odd. Check this out. Yes, that is a hamster wheel standing desk. Now, standing desks have become very popular among the, shall we say, the techie geek computer cube user folk out there who have decided that sitting around all day can lead to problems with your whole body because of just sitting around all day. 
So they came up with the idea of standing desks. Well, that's not good enough. <laughs> it's one thing to have to stand all day at your standing desk because you're being cool and, and health conscious. It's another thing, well, if you're going to stand there, why not go ahead and walk? But you're standing at a desk, you say. Yes, but you can put a treadmill under you. And you can walk on a treadmill all day. Like, that's a good idea. <laughs> okay. Um, here's what I have to say about that in my blog. Now you can build your own hamster wheel standing desk. Yeah. And the psychology of reminding yourself that you're on a treadmill while at work? Priceless. <laughs> Yes, indeed. Now, as you know, my normal mode of operation, or modus operandi, if you're into crime dramas, as I am, um, most of the time, the way I handle things with the blog is I find an interesting article, and I don't want to just take excerpts of that article and put it in the blog, because that would be plagiaristic, shall we say? Assuming that's a word. Um, but no, what I do is I put the whole article in there and I give the individual who wrote it credit at the beginning of the post and where it comes from, like a magazine or another blog or whatever. I'll put that there as well. But occasionally, I will put something that is simply me being me on my own without quoting anyone else, just stuff that I've heard through various means and am now disseminating maybe as fact. We'll, don't, we'll see if it's fact or not. But here it is. <laughs> comic TV shows are exploding on the scene. And this is what I say. There's a lot of comic book heroes and adventures being developed in TV shows that will air over the next two years. We already have Arrow, which is based on DC Comics' Green Arrow. And this year they're adding The Flash. Produced... <laughs> Every time I say The Flash, I hear, Flash, Ah. <laughs> Wrong Flash. Never mind. That's Flash Gordon. Um, produced by the same creators and developers of Arrow. So the people that produce Arrow also produce The Flash. Okay? Other companies are developing properties such as Luke Cage, Daredevil, The Defenders, and other comic book heroes. And I'll put hero in quotes here because this particular one isn't exactly a clean-cut official superhero type. His name is Constantine. It's a little harder core than most of other uh, comic book adventures will be on the air. After all, a hero that has demon's blood in his veins and uses dark magic to pursue those that he goes after can't be considered exactly a good guy. Know what I mean? He's evil. At least in his method of operation, speaking of modus operandi, his method of operation is demonical. And that's not good. There's a whole lot of weird information about him, by the way, that I was sharing with some folks earlier today. You know, he was created as kind of a throwaway character in a swamp thing kind of comic book thing. And the people that were writing it were police fans, you know, the, the rock group, uh, which is headed up by the guy, you know, the Sting, or Sting, I guess his name is. I don't know. I'm not a police fan. I don't know them that well. This is just what I heard. At any rate, the character was drawn to look like this guy Sting. So it's weird. And then he got all, you know, did all these power things and weird occult stuff, and apparently became a big enough character that they gave him his own comic book. And now he's getting a TV show. How weird is that? Anyway, not one that I'll probably be watching myself. But, um, also based on all the interest in zombies in recent years, the CW is bringing out iZombie. Which, you know, everything's got to be i these days. iPod, iPad, i this, that, and the other. And so this one is iZombie, which will be about a med student turned zombie who takes a job in the coroner's office to gain access to the brains that she must reluctantly eat to live. And yes, I put that in quotes as well, because what? <laughs> zombies are dead, but they eat brains to continue to be zombies. <laughs> what? So apparently she's not thrilled about the idea of eating people's brains, but she kind of got to if you're a zombie, you know what I'm saying? So that's weird. But anyway, another one they're going to have is Supergirl. Yay! I'm all for Supergirl. 
a one-hour TV show, and I am looking forward to that one because, after all, Supergirl. I mean, come on. I mean, you know, kal cousin. Yes. So, Zara. What is it? Lara Zariel. Is that it? Her official name? I don't know. Kara. No, Kara. That's it. Kara Zariel. Thank you for reminding me, Fred. Anyway, Kara Zariel. I mostly think of her as Supergirl, you know? Cool. So that's going to be fun. That was, it's actually in development, and it will be out, I don't know, in a year or two. Um, so, we're going from just a few comic book-based TV stories to quite a few. However, that's usually the way it works. As things become successful, they start having imitators of that success. At least that's what they hope. So we'll see how that... Whoa! <laughs> Go! Thank you, Fred, for reminding me of the Geek Software of the Week. Geek Software of the Week this week is interesting. It is Partition Manager 2014 Free Edition. That's a long name. You guys should have come up with something short and to the point. But anyway, this is free, and it's pretty cool. So it says, they say of themselves, partitioning, partitioning, I, I Partitioning is not for amateurs. That's why millions of people have trusted our safe, stable technology and professional software solutions for over 19 years. Our latest 2014 version easily organizes your hard drive and redistributes free space to enhance system performance. Yes. Uh, and it has lots of features, and it's cool, and it's free. Dude, you can't get around that. So it's actually quite useful, and you can install it and use it, and it has a kind of an easy... Actually, the interface looks very Windows 8-ish. You know, lots of little panel-y things. Kind of like that. But I'll forgive it that anyway. <laughs> Not bad. So check it out! Okay, last item for this week is all the hoo-ha over... The Apple iPhone 6 rollout. There's the new iPhone 6, and then there's the 6 Plus. And I will say this about that. The iPhone 6 Plus is the first iPhone that I'd almost be tempted to get, except that I really don't need it. <laughs> and I'll tell you why. My smartphone, which is right here, is an Optimus... <laughs> An Optimus G Pro phone. It's also providing the Wi-Fi for my Chromebook because for some reason my Chromebook didn't pick up the Wi-Fi from the router that's right back behind here. And I don't know why. It's been a tech weird day. You know what I'm saying? But I connected it to my phone <laughs> as a hotspot in order to actually pull up the site. But the point is my phone... <laughs> You knew I was ranting about something. My phone is a phablet. Great big screen. I blocked the light. It made me go dark. Now I'm back. <laughs> anyway, the point is that I like big screens. It's easier to see. And I like seeing my screen. So the iPhone 6 Plus has a bigger screen. Basically, it has a screen just about as big as mine on my phone. But my phone is there and it's already paid for it. I don't need an iPhone. So there. <laughs> but like I said, it's the first one that I was actually quasi interested in. Anyway, the point is I have a video on the blog that shows a fir the first guy that bought an iPhone in Perth, Australia. You say, why do I care about the first guy that bought an iPhone in Perth, Australia? Because he was, he was so excited when he was showing it to the reporter at, <laughs> that was <laughs> that was interviewing him that he got excited. He dropped the phone and the back came off of it. And everybody went, oh, <laughs> about sucked all the air out of the room. Anyway, it was funny. And so I put it in the blog. First guy to get the phone in Canada, in Perth, Australia, Canada, in Perth, Australia, not in Canada, in Perth, Australia, it was in Perth, Australia, anyway, never mind, first guy drops it, and everybody kind of, you know, they laughed a little, kind of embarrassed, you know, frantic sounding laughter, because it was like, ah, he dropped his iPhone, 
Anyway, he put it back together and said it's fine. Although he kept messing with the screen like, maybe it's scratched. I don't want it to be scratched. So, <laughs> it was just odd. So this is just a little, you know, 37 second video of him dropping the phone. You say, Dr. Bill, why did you show somebody dropping their iPhone? Why not? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Anyway, hopefully, this has been informational and educational and generally frivolously, frivolously odd for you this week. Join us again next time. Remember until then that the doctor is out of here. Dr. Bill the Computer Curmudgeon is a production of DrBillBailey.net with all the honors, rights, and privileges thereunto appertaining.